Hello. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to use StatCrunch to perform some of the calculations to estimate the population standard deviation, or maybe the population variance. So if I click on section 7.4, we're going to go to the homework where we have to find confidence interval estimates for the population standard deviation or variance. Now, question 4 is a problem where they give you summary statistics and then ask you to find a confidence interval estimate of the population standard deviation. In this case, they're talking about a simple random sample from a population with a normal distribution of 105 body temperatures, where the sample mean is 98.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and the sample standard deviation is 0.63 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Then they ask you to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation of body temperatures of all healthy humans. So notice, they're giving you some extra information here that you really don't need, namely, the sample mean. Because after all, we're trying to find a confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation, of the population standard deviation, given 105 body temperatures with a sample standard deviation of 0.63 degrees Fahrenheit. So after we find that confidence interval estimate, they're also going to ask you if it's safe to conclude the population standard deviation is less than 2.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So I would recommend that you still do a number of these problems manually using these tables and the calculation and formulas for the chi-squared critical values. However, once you get a feel for those manual calculations, then go ahead and use StatCrunch. It, that's what it's there for, is to you know help you get through the real just monotonous terrible calculations that are involved. Plus, since we have a sample size of 105, finding degrees freedom on the chi-squared distribution table is going to be impossible for you to do, so you'll have to estimate the degrees freedom. So using StatCrunch, you'll be able to find more exact values. So I'm going to go ahead and click StatCrunch. I'm going to resize this window just a little bit here. So using StatCrunch, if I go to the stat button, I'm interested in doing some calculations of variance statistics. And remember, if you have the variance and you got the population standard deviation, in this problem that we're working on, we only have one sample. Later on, for other homework assignments, you'll actually have two samples, so you can use that. But specifically, I have one sample of summary data. Now, if you're given the actual data itself, like if we go back to the homework, if I go to problem number five, notice problem number five, you're actually given the raw data, the raw sample data. So in that case, when you're in StatCrunch, you go to variance statistics, one sample, and this time with data. But for that previous problem, problem number four now, notice you're not given any of the raw data, you're just given the summary data. So inside StatCrunch, we'll go to variance statistics, one sample with summary statistics. So if I click on that, it'll open up this window here where we're asked, all right, what is the sample variance? Now be careful because they told you the sample standard deviation is 0.63. So the sample variance will be the square of that value. So I'm going to open up my calculator here and I'm going to calculate, all right, for 0.63 for the standard deviation, the variance will be the square of that, which is 0.3969. So the sample variance is 0.3969. And now my sample size from that problem, remember, was 105. So my sample size is 105. And now we're asked to find the confidence interval, which they're only giving us the confidence interval for the variance. And they told us we wanted a 95% confidence interval, so we're fine by just saying, yeah, 95%, 95%. And then we can click on Compute. And once we click that button, it's going to generate the 95% confidence interval estimate of the variance for sample size 105 and sample variance of 0.3969. So when I compute that, I get these results back. And notice they give us the lower limit the upper limit of my confidence interval, but they also give us other things like what the sample variance was, how many degrees freedom was used to create this 
lower and upper limit for the confidence interval estimate. Now be careful. These are the lower and upper limits for the confidence interval estimate of the population variance, not the standard deviation, which is what's being asked here. So the values that are being shared with us here, we're going to have to find the square root of in order to find the lower and upper limits for the confidence interval estimate for the standard deviation. So if I take the square root of 0.30778646, that'll give me the lower limit for the confidence interval estimate for the standard deviation. And then I'm also going to take the square root of that upper limit, 0.53143356. Oop, I didn't type that in right. I needed 53143356. There we go. And this will give me the upper limit. So there are my limits now for the 95% confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation. And for the homework problem, they ask you to round to two decimal places. So it's going to be 0.55 to 0.73. Then we check our answer. Ooh, awesome. And now the last part of this. Is it safe to conclude that the population standard deviation is less than 2.4 degrees Fahrenheit? Really, what we're asking you then, it's going to be safe to conclude the actual population standard deviation is less than 2.4 degrees Fahrenheit. If the standard deviation is less than 2.4 degrees Fahrenheit by looking at the confidence interval. We're estimating that the population standard deviation is between 0.55 degrees Fahrenheit and 0.73 degrees Fahrenheit. right? Your entire interval then what we're predicting the actual population standard de deviation to be is less than 2.4 degrees. Notice the maximum upper limit we're saying is 0.73, which is less than 2.4. So certainly our estimate says, yeah, the population standard deviation is less than 2.4. If 2.4 degrees were actually within this confidence interval, then we couldn't conclude the population standard deviation is less than it because it could possibly be equal or even greater. But in this case, since both of our limits here are less than 2.4 degrees, that 2.4 degrees is not in the interval, that is, then we can conclude safely that the population standard deviation is less than 2.4 degrees, at least with 95% confidence. So we say the conclusion is safe because 2.4 degrees is outside the confidence interval. And look, they even give us some affirmation in Spanish. Well done. Right? So now, let's go on to another problem where we do a hypothesis test. Right? So we move on to section 8.5 and choose a problem involving a hypothesis test for standard deviations, which, you know, for the most part, involves finding a p-value or maybe, you know, critical values. So when we click on this problem, they say we have a simple random sample of 30 filtered 100 millimeter cigarettes obtained from a normally distributed population. That's to say the amount of whatever that we're testing here, I think we're testing what, nicotine or tar? Tar, it looks like. When we start measuring the amount of tar in cigarettes, we see a normally distributed population. And the tar content of each cigarette is measured. Oh, I guess they said right there. The sample has a standard deviation of 0.22 milligrams of tar. So that's a sample statistic they're giving you. The standard deviation amount of tar in our 100, or in our 30 cigarettes, sorry, is 0.22 milligrams. Use a 5% significance to test the claim that the tar content of a filtered 100 millimeter cigarette has a standard deviation different than 0.35 milligrams, which is the standard deviation for unfiltered king size cigarettes, completes part A through D. So really we have a certain standard deviation that we're testing relative to something we're assuming to be true, which is uh, that unfiltered king size cigarettes have a standard deviation tar content of 0.35 milligrams. We think our filtered cigarette should have a standard deviation lower than that. 
right? Or actually not lower, but just different, they say here. We're testing the claim that it's just different. So the null and alternative hypothesis, well, it's either going to be significantly different than 0.35, or it's going to be just the same thing. Now, remember, the null hypothesis always involves the equality, so that's going to disqualify parts B and C, because here we have null hypotheses that do not involve equalities. So between A and D, A says either the standard deviation is 30, you know, 35 hundredths of a milligram, or it's significantly less than, or part D, it's equal to 0.35 milligrams, or significantly different, which is what we want. Now, notice the claim here is the alternative hypothesis, which is going to play a big part in the final conclusion. Now, find the test statistic. Now, if you recall, the test statistic can be found by taking the degrees freedom which will be 30 minus 1, so 29 degrees freedom, times the sample variance divided by the population variance we assume to be true in our null hypothesis. So if we break out our calculator, we can do this calculation. The degrees freedom of 29 times the population, uh, time, sorry, the sample variance, so 0.22 squared, because that's going to be the variance since we're given the standard deviation, divided by the population standard deviation, or population variance we assume to be true, so population variance, 0.35 squared as well. Now I'm using a Texas Instruments graphing calculator, so it understands the order of operations and the expression that I've typed in here, and I get a nice test statistic of 11.4579, rounded to three decimal places, is going to give us 11.4, uh, sorry, 458, there we go. Check our answer. And now they say, all right, so here's your test statistic. What's the p value relative to this test statistic? Now, notice we're dealing with the two tailed test here because the alternative hypothesis says the standard deviation is significantly different, so it could be less or greater than. So, whatever we you know, area we find relative to this test statistic in the direction of the nearest alternative tail will have to double. But this is where StatCrunch is going to come in very handy because, you know, sometimes we're not going to have the degrees freedom or even the significance in the chi-square distribution chart. So I'm going to go to Stat again. Variance statistics, once more. We're only dealing with one sample, not two samples or two population standard deviations. And I'm going to do it with summary data again. Except now, we're going to be interested in the hypothesis test for the variance. So we input our sample variance once again. So our sample variance was found by taking 0.22 squared. I'm actually going to have to type that in and figure that out. 0.22 squared, which is 0 0.0484. 0 0.0484. The sample size was 30. And now we're going to specify that we want to perform a hypothesis test for the variance. Now remember, the variance we're assuming to be true is 0.35 squared. So let's type that in and find out that actual value, 0.35 squared, which is 0.1225. And the alternative hypothesis was that it's not equal to, right? Not equal to. Now, everything was written here in terms of the standard deviation, but it's okay. We can just rewrite it in terms of a variance because, after all, remember, the variance is just the square of the population standard deviation. And at this point, StatCrunch will now calculate the test statistic and the p-value for this two-tailed test by clicking Compute. Here is our results. Notice the test statistic, 11.458, which was identical to what we input here, 11.458. But now they give us the p-value of 0 0.003. So let's type that in. 0 0.003. Now, we're using a significance level 
of 5%. Our p-value is 0.3%, which is less than the level of significance. And when the p-value is less than the significance level, that tells us getting this sample data by choice is highly unlikely, which would tell us to reject the null hypothesis, to reject our assumption, and conclude that, yeah, our sample data tells us that, yeah, it's that more than likely these filtered cigarettes have a standard deviation tar content that is significantly different, in this case less, than the kink-sized uh, unfiltered cigarettes. Yeah, so state the conclusion. We are going to reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is less than the level of significance. Therefore, since our claim was the alternative hypothesis, our final conclusion is a statement of support or not to support. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude the tar content of filtered 100 millimeter cigarettes has a standard deviation different than 0.35, right? And really, if we wanted to be specific about that, we'd say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the filtered 100 millimeter cigarettes has a standard deviation different than 0.35. And once again, they give us a Spanish affirmation. Well done, eh? Please don't write me any emails. I know that's well done, but it's just my way of being funny. And there you go. That's how we're going to use StatCrunch now to help us find p-values and also confidence interval estimates.